Thank you. Because of the dialogue, of, of course, all my colleagues in the dialogue, and I as a victim design. <laughs> so we're not allowed to the treat John as a victim. To be here. <laughs> so I will try to uh, introduce some elements on the discussion on the future, uh, not in a long-term future, rather in the short-term future. And I shall begin by the past. If I succeed to use this device, no. No. <laughs> Can you show me how it works? <laughs> there you go. Ah, on the side. Okay. Uh, I arrived in the commission in '90. The first document on which I have worked was this green paper. Making payment in the internal market. I will speak only about the internal market. Uh, because I have a look to the document yesterday, and you can see from the second paragraph that what is the idea? The idea is no difference between a national payment and a cross-border payment. It was what we have written in 90, September 90. We are still in this logic, but the work is not finished. We are far from being, from being finished. So what, as regards the regulatory system, because it was the uh, beginning of the uh, discussion, uh, Payment Service Directive 2007, and now we are discussing uh, the new uh, PSD, Electronic Money di uh, Directive, Regulation on Cross-Border Payment in Euro, that's the new version, the old version was of 2001, with the idea that for payment in Euro, the fees paid by the <coughs> users have to be the same, have to be the same for a national payment and a cross-border payment. And uh, at that time, uh, it was usual that a credit transfer in a country was quite free of charge, when for the same amount, the cross-border credit transfer was 15, 20, 25 euro for a credit transfer of 100 euro. There, here uh, we have uh, improvement. So we are still in this logic of creating the internal market for payment. <laughs> the work is not finished, and uh, the last uh, legal proposal was where uh, the uh, draft regulation and interchange fee. I will uh, explain some briefly, and uh, the. Uh, um, payment Service Directive number two. Uh, how all this articulate? It's important to understand that uh, on card based payment, you have a specific transaction this is the regulation. On credit transfer and direct debit, you have a specific regulation on SEPA and bank. And to all kind of payment, all the rules which are in the Payment Service Directive uh, are apply to all this kind. Uh, we have no. Yes, together, the industry, the EPC, uh, make a huge progress in this field. Because in this field, now, you have an internal market for credit transfer and direct debit. Uh, three years from now, it was impossible, except between uh, Germany and Austria, to set up a direct debit cross-border. Now it's possible. Here we have made huge progress, and you have now uh, an existing infrastructure for a lot of progress in terms of uh, innovation in payment. That I want to underline because it's a very important point. So where we are with the regulation, the PSD? On the regulation, the work is closed. Uh, we are now discussing the translation in the 20 language. It's quite complicated, but uh, at the end, the document will be published in the official journal with all the signature uh, in end of April, probably in May. Uh, on PSD2, we have the first uh, trilogue tomorrow, uh, not, not tomorrow, this afternoon in uh, 35 minutes, <laughs> um, which is the first one of a series of this, uh, of this uh, trilogue. Just a reminder, when you have competition, 
you have some kind of same price for the same service. That's the effect of competition in economic theory. As regards interchange fee, you see in this graph that you have huge difference from one country to, the, to another country. And it's why an explanation is that uh, payments are blocked uh, in, one, in each country and you have very few uh, competition. Uh, why, by, for example, many debit cards can only be used in one country and not in the other? Main point of the regulation, uh, interchange fee caps, 0.3 per transaction for credit card, 0.2 for debit card, except if member states, another uh, way of calculation, uh, we have no time to discuss that, it's very technical. Other aspect important in this, we want to improve competition in the field of payment. Uh, Everybody knows, I think, that uh, payment is a, a two-sided market. You need to have kind of competition on the two legs of the uh, two-sided market. And here we are clearly in a situation where you have not enough competition as regards the acquiring legs. You have competition on the issuing legs, not on the other. And it's why uh, we, the uh, regulation contain a, li a list of uh, ways to improve uh, competition. And it's important to know, because it's not written everywhere, that many of these rules uh, have been written with the idea of innovation, with the idea of mobile payment. Because everybody knows, I think, that in the future you will not have the plastic you will have uh, your mobile, including a lot of uh, new uh, payment uh, instruments. <laughs> and here, you see, it's only card. I am not sure that the future is card. I am not sure that the most important innovation will be in the field of card. When you see, for example, in the UK, uh, I think uh, you will speak about that, uh, uh, the development of PAYM or of ZAP or the uh, Swedish SWISH, uh, you see that it's not based on uh, car transaction. is on the contrary, based on the infrastructure, the existing infrastructure of SEPA credit transfer and uh, SEPA uh, direct debit. And so, also, with this idea of uh, innovation, uh, of course, old-fashioned, Thanks to the EPC, the rule is one terminal for all cards in the EU. But uh, perhaps we have to think about things to necessary to be done to have the same efficiency that we have now for card reader in shops, to have the same situation as regards the use of new technology, uh, for example, in the use of uh, mobile. Bon, that's now for... Uh, the uh, regulation, some words about the PSD, with the idea that the PSD uh, in 2007, the idea was to introduce a new uh, actor in the market. At that time, it was a payment institution. It was in 2007. Uh, since the development of the market, since new innovation, uh, we arrived to the conclusion that it was necessary to update uh, this legislation and uh, to introduce to give access to the market to some of the uh, new uh, <coughs> actors because those actors were outside and not regulated at all. So uh, this, uh, what is called in the generic term of TPP, it was necessary to uh, include them in the scope. The idea is that you have a single license to provide payment services because you need to be licensed to provide payment services. In the initial PSD, you have these three categories. Uh, in uh, the PSD2, we are introducing the payment initiation service. I think uh, our friend from support will explain. And uh, account information services. That's a uh, new uh, actor uh, on uh, the market. 
Yes, also what we want to avoid for uh, consumer, that the fact that the, the whole uh, system should, have, should be able to work uh, in a secure manner. And so uh, that's the one of the main important innovation in PSD2, the idea of security and the strong uh, customer uh, authentication. As regards the use of internet payment, uh, for me, a striking example, and it was one of the questions um, to explain the behavior of consumer. Why, in the Netherlands, 60% of internet payments are made using Ideal? Why, 100% of payments on internet made in France are using cards? Why, how can you explain this? My answer is bank's behavior. Which bank has decided to create ideal, has made the promotion of ideal, very efficient. A lot of people consider that to be a very interesting solution. But in, except some, but some uh, in Germany and Austria, banks have not done this proposal. Why? So, what uh, our friend Mr. Ludwigson will discuss in 45 minutes. TPPs, I mentioned the Payment Initiation Service and uh, payment, uh, Account Information Service. All the aspects about security authentication, strong customer authentication. Of course, the, the scope. Something complicated between member states about supervision. Who is doing supervision? Host member states or uh, home member states. And important point, surcharge. It's a very, very sensitive debate on which uh, there is a lot of uh, different opinions. Just to conclude, I just explain the immediate uh, work, the legislative work. Uh, the commission, we have, you, you know, we have a new commission, it is next November. We have a new commissioner, vice president in charge of digital single market. Uh, Mr. Ansip, that's his name, uh, has launched uh, a lot of works about digital single market. Uh, there is a big meeting organized end of February about that. Uh, and the we are all in the Commission working to do proposal for this program. Everybody wants to see uh, his idea integrated in the program. But we shall have only the solution on the, fifth, the 6th of May, the Wednesday, as we go for the Commission meeting, where uh, this uh, digital single market agenda will be uh, adopted by the College and will be the action of the Commission as regards uh, digital market uh, in the next five years. Thank you very much.